You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the clock cleaners podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we'll be doing Raw from <laughs> October 9th. What yeah. Is, what is what is the giggles for? No, there's no giggles. It was just, it was like, yeah, I'm me. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> so, uh, Raw starts off with, uh, I guess, a video package recapping what happened in the IC title We're match last gonna, night. not even going to, you know, get with the overall thoughts here no. before we get in? No. We're just getting into it? Yeah. All right. Whatever. Well, we'll get we'll get into the overall thoughts when the show is over. We'll recap the recap at the end of the show. I thought it was really good. The Raw was really good. I thought it was a decent show, yeah. It was, uh, there was not a whole lot of, uh, filler. There was definitely some crap. Yes, but that's to be expected in a WWE production. Um, but there was not a lot of filler, and the stuff that actually showed up flowed, and it was actually a very brisk pace for a show, for a Raw. Sure, so, if you say so. I thought so. All right. It just the time, it's not very often where I look at the clock and I go, wow, it's 9 o'clock already. That does not happen. The only times I looked at the clock were it was like maybe like 9.30 and I was like, wow, they have nobody else to use in these matches. That part was also true. Because when but... Braun Strowman came out, I was like, who's he going to fight? And then I was like, oh, yeah. All right. Who else is going to fight tonight? I was like, no, there's nobody else left. Yeah. Okay. That, that part <laughs> did cross my mind as well. Yeah. But at the same time. Like I said, I think they did a good job for what they did. Yeah. I thought that was a very entertaining show. Fair enough. All, All right. right. So go back into it. Okay. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. So they did that video package, um, and then they opened the show for the live, I guess, part or whatever, mm -hmm. with uh, The Miz's music playing, and The Miz and Curtis Axel are in the ring. I believe we were told that it was going to open with The Miz TV. Right? Yes. So it was odd that they didn't technically do that. They mm -hmm. did a... They were doing The Mizzies 2. Yes. Or whatever, mm -hmm. for some reason. Yep. Um, so it was the second the last iteration. Times when they did it when he was feuding with Dean. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Dean. You just can't move away from Dean, can he? It's true. I'll tell you what, <laughs> it's definitely true. Yeah. Um, so they uh, he goes about awarding people with Mizzies. Mm -hmm. The first one goes to Curtis Axel. Yes. He wins for Perseverance. Mm -hmm. I think he said something about yeah. because he was able to survive getting beat up by roman or something probably something he's good at making stuff up. um and then and, and then he uh he decides to give um or for the mizzy for best supporting actor damn it um it was actually a tie yes, for the first the time ever <laughs> it was a tie and it went to seamus and cesaro the so bar. The, the bar won for best supporting actor mm -hmm. and at that point the two of them come out yeah <laughs> um, and they say in their acceptance speech that they want to thank Roman Reigns for mm -hmm. his destruction. Oh, yeah, allowing us to destroy him mm -hmm. and put him down for good. Yep. And then, um, as well as Dean and Seth for being right. a part of it or something like that. That they did something revolutionary and took down the shield that John Cena and the Undertaker and whoever else couldn't well, do. It, he he said ju he just said Roman. Oh, and it was, oh, it, was it just was Roman. Yeah, oh, okay. the Miz was also just talking about him. Oh no, he says the three of them. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he said specifically Roman. I got you. And then he awarded the right. third Mizzy, mm -hmm. which was... We all know who this was for. Well, obviously. Um, and the Mizzy he called was to for the new the, the, the new guy, big right, dog. Right, yeah, the new, yeah, something like that. And then he says that he wins it, and now he's the guy. Yep. Like Roman Reigns claimed he mm -hmm. used to be. Um, and then at this point, Roman comes out. Mm -hmm. and then he goes or the Miz goes well first Roman tells him to get hell out of the ring right, yeah. and the Miz is like well what are you going to do it's four of us and there's only one, one of you, you. and then, like, there was rumors of the shield getting back rumors there ain't no rumors and then, and then all of a sudden Dean and then Seth come mm -hmm. out um, they walk down to the ring surround the ring they walk, climb into the ring and then a brawl ensues. Yes. They very well, the Miz ducks out immediately. Yeah. So it's just three on three. Mm -hmm. And then the shield got the upper hand. Mm -hmm. And then they took Miz, brought him in the ring, hit him with a power bomb, and that's all she wrote. Yep. So and Michael Cole was very excited about oh this. Oh my god. He uh throughout the show, it's like a very exciting night. We have the shield reuniting. Yeah. We never thought it was gonna happen again. <laughs> 
Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I mean, so. <clears throat> I, I thoroughly enjoy the dynamic of the three of them. But they definitely look like they're enjoying doing mm-hmm. it, too. They, they have a level of confidence and um, just, like, intensity. Because even in Dean, he went from being seeming Cookie. goofy <laughs> to seeming like someone who... He's still a very intense. Well, yes, but that's just Dean. Yeah, but he seemed more intense, mm-hmm. and Seth seemed like he was actually enjoying himself for once. Because generally speaking, he does not look no, very he looks miserable. Yeah, so I I think as much as a push as they wanted to give him, who's Seth? You're talking about? Yeah, oh, yeah. Him and his face roll just wasn't working. So, it just doesn't feel right. Yeah, because he was, just, he was he a great He went through the heel. company as such a good heel he was a great for so heel. long. And then... He was the authority's puppet, basically. Mm-hmm. So he went from being a face to a heel. The face worked when he was with the shield. Right. And then... Well, because they weren't technically faces. Yeah, they were They were tweeners. Yeah. Because they... They were mercenaries. Yes, because they fought, <laughs> fought for both sides. Yes. Um, but that's that's a much better role, I think, for all three of these guys. All of them have developed that. Yeah. Where they can play the part of not good guy or bad guy, mm-hmm. and, and it'll hope- get over. So my biggest question is, do they have this as a strictly um, get Roman shield? Over no, 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 no. Uh. Have shield just do three on three feuds for a few oh, months? Okay. Or do they make it so that they all go their separate ways, but at the same time, they're still all together. terms and everything like that. They're all still a team. Right. Like the Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn thing that we were talking about. Yes. Um, Because as long as the thought that the three of them could team up is there, it makes all of their presences seem more threatening. Right. So I think that that would be a good way to go about it. This way you have... A, a a potential yeah. B storyline, but in your back pocket. All we the time. ultimately know what WWE's agenda is. Yes, here. they want Roman to be over again, and it's working, and it's fine. Oh yeah, the fans went nuts, absolutely nuts. Yeah, they chanted for the Shield before when Roman came out. And if they did it this way, it's fine, and it becomes more organic rather mm-hmm. than just know. one day all of a sudden. Yeah, they 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 definitely built it very well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that brings yeah. us to the first match of the night: mm-hmm. Jason Jordan versus Carl Anderson. Yeah, Carl Anderson out there again to eat another pin. It's funny because they they showed the clip from last week about um, Luke Gallows calling him, him <laughs> and the, the Hardys nerd. nerds. Yeah. That's funny. Nerd. But at least they didn't so call good. Dean a nerd again. That would yeah, have been that's bad. True. Um, but yeah, this was uh. Not a huge surprise who went over here. Obviously. Yeah. So, uh, the, actually, the large majority of this match, it was just uh, <laughs> Corey Graves and Michael Cole picking on uh, Booker T. Yeah. He said a couple of dumb things, too. Well, yeah, because he uh, Booker was, like, complaining about how um, Jason Jordan was getting oh, opportunities right, yeah. because of who his dad is. Right. And then but last it, week he said he wasn't or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and then and he was, said that he deserves his opportunities, right. and he goes back and forth. And Corey called him out on it, I yeah. think. That's what it was, yeah. And then um, at the end of the match, after he wins with his neckbreaker, because neck yeah. they still haven't given it a name yet, yeah. um, Booker goes, I like this kid. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, it, it's, it's funny. It, it's not very often where the commentary team actually adds entertainment yeah. to the uh to the to the show but at least this was a good especially since actually no i for some reason i thought Corey graves but we were just talking about him i thought Corey graves left for smackdown oh, but that's not true no. he's on both which yeah. is the best way to do it the only that, the way that would have worked is if they brought otonga into villa spot so dumb <laughs> although he wasn't bad on the pre-show I don't know. from I what i heard it. <laughs> from from what i heard of him he was not bad ah. but i think this was more of a scripted situation than mm-hmm. a Having to go Here, by you ear. say this, yeah, not free uh, freelance, and yeah, uh, so then you end up with Booker T. He's not as good on his feet as as the other guys I are. Miss tea time. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Uh, um, anyway, yeah. so what do we go up up next? Uh, backstage, Kurt Ang- I think Miz was getting tended to right. He had ice on himself. Yeah, he was in the I guess the the medics lounge or whatever. 
Yeah, and then uh, what did he say? He said the Miz, uh, he's going to get what he wants, right? Yep. And then Kurt makes a TLC match with The Bar and The Miz versus The Shield. Mm-hmm. So We all saw this coming. Oh, yeah. So I, 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 I thoroughly enjoyed this because The Bar and The Miz are a good team mm-hmm. and The Shield, obviously, and just have these because they're just all such good competitors. And the Miz has really elevated himself right. to a significantly. Yeah, but the, I mean, the only thing that leaves me asking a question is that now you take three belts away mm-hmm. from the equation. So the only one that will be defended is the women's championship, well, unless they do what I said last week and they put all the titles on the line in mm-hmm. that one match. Yeah, which would be cool. It'd it be, would different, be different, and absolutely. it'd be a very easy way just to have all the all the gold on one. Mm-hmm. That would make a huge for a huge main event. Too. They've done it before. Um, Dean had the U.S. title, mm-hmm. and Seth and Roman had the tag titles. Okay. So this would effectively give each member of the Shield the the uh, triple crown. Right. Oh. Okay. Because yeah, Dean sure. hasn't held tag team gold, mm-hmm. and Roman hasn't hold, held the IC title. So, and they've all been world champions. Mm-hmm. So that's true. Well, Dean's held tag team now. Oh, yeah, team. okay, that's right, I forgot. <laughs> he he, he's the current team tag team champion. Yeah. Uh, I forgot about that part, my bad. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> anyway. Up, up next, we had Elias out there to sing a song, mm-hmm. and he gets through his, <laughs> his usual uh, well, he was, he telling was, the crowd to shut up. Yeah, and he was being it. very mean. And then he goes to strum his guitar, and then all of a sudden we hear a banjo. Yep. And uh, He was trying to figure out why his guitar yeah. is making the sound of the banjo. <laughs> So then Titus comes out and he's playing the banjo and he says Apollo, I mean uh, Elias is gonna lose to Apollo Cruz. Yeah, he and wants to know who we walk, who wants to walk, walk with Titus. Titus worldwide. Yes, um, this was pretty funny. Yeah, um, yeah. So we're gonna get Apollo Cruz versus uh, Elias again, mm-hmm. and uh, again Apollo showed his athleticism throughout the whole match, and, and then, then Elias picked his spot and hit him with drift away. Yeah, so oh, he did hit old school on he did yes i must have he walked up the rope grabbed his hand then came down wow yeah it looks really good that's interesting it's better than well it makes sense doing it well and it's it's he is walking (laughs) so that that part kind of makes sense (laughs) you're thinking um so during this match the standout part for me is that michael cole's spreading more lies about elias samson (laughs) he's saying something about uh, was it, it guns? No, no, no. Oh, it was, it was, it was Slash. Right, right. Yeah. He gave him a guitar. Yeah. And said that this guy is going to be something someday or so something. So it like gets that. better because Elias tagged both Michael Cole and Corey Graves on Twitter, and there was an Instagram picture of his guitar with Slash signed. <laughs> the it's, lengths that they go. Yeah, but you're building somebody by you know doing very little things. Oh yeah, it's the same. The, the um when the Miz had his initial heel run Mm -hmm. leading to his world title reign yeah michael cole did nothing but build up the miz yeah and i noticed it during like pay-per-views when i was watching the pay-per-views i'm like why is he talking about the miz the miz sucks (laughs) and then it led to that granted it was a inevitable you know flat just crazy what the miz has gone oh absolutely it's just he went from a laughing stock to probably the top with the best the best performing heel in the company no well, the best talking heel. Yeah, I guess. I it's know. hard to say because Kevin Owens isn't so much a talker. It's just the Miz can, like, turn it on. That's yeah. what it is. Like, he could just flip a switch, and all of a sudden you get this intense guy mm-hmm. that just doesn't miss a beat, and it's yeah. just... But it's I would, almost like a shoot type uh, yeah. deal. Well, with all the talking smacks though. Well, yeah, exactly. But I also, at and the same time... And Cena and Enzo and everything. I would, I would consider... Um, Owens is it would be more of a performance, mm-hmm. whereas uh, the Miz it's more of a just the in the like uh, talking sense because oh, yeah, Owens yeah. is all in, where the Miz mm-hmm. isn't the physical part right. of it. No. no, not at all. So, so that's where the two of them differentiate, yeah. but still probably the best two mm-hmm. in the company right now because yeah. there's really no other good heels. Like they have Bray Wyatt as a competition. It's true. <clears throat> So uh, anyway, yeah. So up next, we had the first of three cruiserweight segments. Surprisingly, yeah, it's kind of hard to believe. Yeah, um, 
Enzo was coming out, and you know he was upset that Kalisto is getting a title shot at TLC. Mm-hmm. And then he says that, you know, he shows the clause that he had Kurt Angle sign. His piece two, of paper. Yeah, two weeks ago, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he said that Kalisto yes. broke broke the clause. Mm-hmm. And then well, Kurt Angle comes out, right? Well, well yeah. Kurt out at this point? Um, I think th- that's when Angle comes yeah. out. And he says that uh, the clause was only good before he signed Kalisto. No, it was for people, oh, for that were, people that were who were signed, signed before, before Kalisto. Kalisto. Yes. Or before he signed the contract <clears throat> and anyone signed afterwards right. was okay. Mm-hmm. And so. Enzo goes into saying that Kurt Angle hustled him mm-hmm. and all this other he stuff. He said a lot of other words, oh, yeah, too. but He just kept going on and on. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he's Enzo complains that he's going to have to defend his title. And then Kurt Angle says, you know what? I'm going to make that match for tonight. Yep. And then he's walking up the, the ramp. And then he says, you know what? I'm going to remove that clause for tonight only, and I'm going to make it a lumberjack match. So now all of the cruiserweights can touch Mm -hmm. (laughs) Enzo any way they want. Any way, any way, anywhere? Yes. Whoa. That's not very PG, Matt. Well, you know. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So up next, they talk about the Shield reunion some more. Yeah. They did a lot of recapping of stuff that happened earlier on the night. Yeah. Well, the Shield is the whole spotlight. Yeah, it was the story. Yeah, because that is the story going into TLC, so it makes complete sense. It's true. Um, so after that, Braun Strowman comes out, Braun! and uh, well, very much like you had said earlier, <laughs> we get to this point and we go, "Who is he facing?" <laughs> well, all right. So the the bar and the Miz were in the first segment, so mm-hmm. they neither of them wrestled throughout the night. Which the bar wrestled uh, Seth and Dean in a dark match after the show. That makes sense. Not a surprise, and. None of the Shield members wrestled, so that... Besides took, Dean and Seth? I mean, during, oh, the, during show. the show. during the show? Yeah, so you took six guys out of the equation mm-hmm. who have been pretty much a key aspect of the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was just weird. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it ends up that it was Matt Hardy mm-hmm. who decides to take on the Beast. Yep. Or not the Beast, the monster. Monster. Monster among men. Yes. He's not like most men. Yeah, so... Uh, Which I think Bray Wyatt said that during his promo, too. <laughs> I'm not like most men. No, 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 when he was... I'm not the, like most girls. When he was Sister Abigail, and she said, he's not like most men, or something uh, like that. <laughs> yeah, that was... Yeah, we'll get, oh, we'll we'll get, get to that, that when we get to that. Um, So, Matt gets beat down pretty much like yeah, everybody else does. but he was... Yeah, he was able to hold his own, like... Very Seth much and like Dean, Dean and yeah. Seth were. Which so, it's not nice. a surprise. No, it was good to see, though. Yeah, so, do. he actually ends up being able to hit a Tornado DDT, and then he hits a the twist, uh, of, twist fate. of fate. And then Strowman kicks out at one. Yep. <laughs> so, they're doing a really good job of pushing uh, Strowman. As a monster. Yeah, so, I because, like we said last week, it's... They're trying to put him in with more legitimate people who aren't going to lose any rub right. off of losing, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it elevates yeah. him. Oh, yeah, it's better than him fighting, you know, six jobs. James Ellsworth months. over and over again. <laughs> hey, um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, what was this? Strowman hit two choke slams, and then the running power slam? Yeah, yeah it was it was a fairly yeah. quick and uh, then Turn he got around. the three count. Mm-hmm. So after the match, he goes to leave the ring, and he goes, I'm not finished with you yet. Yeah, he picks speaking. up Matt Hardy. And just ca- starts carrying him to the back. He's like, oh, man, he's going to break him. Mm-hmm. I was hoping he was like, I'm going to go break you now. I'm like, is this like going to be where they go with this? <laughs> and, and it ended up not being the case, up obviously. the ramp, and then the, sh- the shield, shield come out. Right. And no music, though, right? No, they just, just walk <clears> onto the stage. <clears throat> he, and he's and not Braun intimidated. Braun just drops Matt Hardy, and you see Matt Hardy scurry away. Yep next to the entrance and uh the shield beat him down and they pick him up triple yeah. power bomb through the announce table yep which i thought booker t fell off the stage he ran away very he quickly. ran and then they grabbed the chairs that was pretty funny yeah so you could definitely see him scurry it was mm-hmm. pretty good um so they cut the commercial they come back the shield are walking down the hallway <clears throat> and they get interviewed but but uh by charlie <laughs> and seth goes Listen, Charles, you're great at your job, but <laughs> and uh, but yeah, they basically say that they're they're back and or back in business mm-hmm. and they're they're ready to take on all challengers. It doesn't matter how many there are, and they they Everyone run this house. Everyone and now. anyone. They run this house now. 
Didn't they say they would take like a, any four, any any team on? Yeah, right? make it make it three, make three, it four. four it right? doesn't so matter. That's where it came in. Yeah, and and uh, uh, then they walk off. Yep. Um. So up next, Mickey James comes out, and she basically is talking to her about Alexa Bliss and how that she's afraid of her and stuff. I refer, she's a Bliss is afraid of Mickey. That yes. Is. And then she calls her out, and Alexa comes out, and then you know she goes on about the old stuff. And then they play this uh, video package, which is, what is it called? The Star of Yesteryear. Yeah, it was pretty like, funny. Mickey, oh, this is great. Like, I don't care. I mean, it's obviously stupid, the base of the storyline, but it's working. Yeah. And it's good because Mickey's good and Alexa's good. It was, and it's different. It was funny because I thought it was going to be another This Is Your Life type thing. Where it <laughs> I, I cringed, flat. too. I was like, oh, no. But yeah, oh, it, no. It ended up being very good. Um but yeah, after after the clip was over, Alexa mm. continued the turn up your you know uh, your hearing, hearing aid. aid and stuff like that. And then <laughs> Mickey tells her to bring her biscuit butt to the ring, which ensued the crowd to chant biscuit, biscuit butt. butt. Yes, well, just like Sparkle Crotch. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> How could I forget that? Um, and then Alexa walks towards yeah, the ring. She like, holds the belt up and then goes now and starts turning around. Mickey jumps out of the ring and starts beating her down. And uh, that was pretty much it. Yeah. Wasn't a whole lot to that segment. No. But it was just to build the animosity between mm. the two even more. Yeah, it was a good, good segment. Yeah. So I, uh, I'm looking forward to this title match. Yeah, it should be good. Yeah. Yeah. Mickey James is very good, and Alexa has proven to I mean, be a strong champion. Not to agree with Alexa Bliss, but you could tell the, the very big difference in her age from those videos. Oh. And Mickey was just, well, yeah. You know, it, it's just it's just funny. Yeah. When you see it, and you're like, oh my gosh, she was so young. Mm-hmm. That was a long time ago. Yeah. So, um, they uh, backstage. Bailey and Sasha are watching the uh, Oscar debut. Right? Yeah. So the, before the we promo. get into this, so what I had read before Raw went on the air is that we were going to get Nia, Alicia Fox, and Emma in a triple threat match to fight Oscar at TLC. Um. Well, I think. They made the right decision in not including Nia Jax because mm-hmm. having her not oh win... God, that would have been Botchfest 8000. Well, I'm just saying, having her <laughs> not win that match would be stupid. Right. So I figured that was well, the reason why she wasn't in it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's just... We'll, we'll get into it when we get into but it. But yeah, um, Sasha and Bailey say to Angle that they each want their shot. Mm-hmm. And then Alicia Fox comes up and says that, I've so been here screaming. around for 10 years. I get no respect. Blah, blah, blah. And then Dana and Emma both come in, say their piece, mm-hmm. and then Angle decides to make it a fatal five way. Mm-hmm. And that was it. Yeah. And so we'll get to that when we get to that. Yes. All right. So up next, we have uh, Cedric Alexander and Mustafa Ali versus Brian Kendrick and Jack Gallagher. All right. So let me ask you a question. What? You're showcasing two fantastic high flying cruiserweights on a team. Mm hmm. And this was a ground-based match. Mm-hmm. They worked so slow and so bad. Why would you put this on? The crowd looked bored to tears. Because you have to have the cruiserweights on. But why couldn't you give them a little more freedom? Because it's raw. I know your point. It's I'm just, just so frustrating. I know, I know. Because you made so much emphasis on the cruiserweight division. Especially the last, the last three few weeks. weeks. Yeah. And then you give us this crap. Mm-hmm. Well, they were technically technically going to kendrick and gallagher's strengths no so I, I that part makes sense it, but you're trying to build up the cruiserweight i mean mustafa ali he showed a couple of cool things that he does mm-hmm. but overall this was a slow paced mm-hmm. ground-based match yep but Which, you know as we've explained you can't really expect too much not on monday night raw anyway yeah it was from the cruiserweights i should say yeah well well the raw has got good stuff oh, it's yeah. just not not mm-hmm. the cruiserweights. It's because it's not necessarily a raw raw thing. They just happen to have a uh, yeah. shoehorned segment on raw. Yeah, that's the way they've been. No, I know it. it's like I said. But yeah, it's just um, yeah. Ali these, inevitably gets pinned by Brian Kendrick after sliced bread number two. The Brian Kendrick. The Brian Kendrick. Yeah. Or the Spanky. Uh, the Spanky. <laughs> All right. So yep. uh, up next, we got backstage. The Miz says that. He's going to take Dean on his word. Mm-hmm. He was talking to Kurt Angle and about the uh, taking on as many people. Mm-hmm. So he wants a fourth member. And <laughs> Angle goes, well, all right, who is he? And, and, and uh, Miz is like, he, he's right here. And there's nobody there. And all of a sudden, the door opens and Stroman comes in. And he kicked the door open. 
<laughs> and then Strowman leaves. If I was Kurt, I would be like, how long were you locking him in that closet for? He was awfully angry. Well, he wasn't in a closet. I know. He was in a room. It was just so funny the way he came through. It was It was funny. So we, I, I saw that coming when, they, <laughs> oh, when yeah, the Miz absolutely. came up. Obviously, it wouldn't make any sense to add Axel to the match. No, but you're... I mean, I, I get it, but I don't... Get, I mean, maybe the Miz will get injured, and it'll just be a three-on-three three or something like that. Well, this also gives the Miz the chance to, to not participate. Right. Yeah, I So think he'll that's... be in the match, but he'll be out of the mm-hmm. match. Yeah, or if, the, if that team ends up winning, mm-hmm. then he'll be the one to grab the briefcase yeah. while everyone else is down. True. Or, or not the briefcase that... Uh, I guess they would have to make it a title match. Yeah. Because there's really no I other reason. Is, what are you going to put up there? Yeah. yeah. A Kalisto on a pole match? There you go. Um, unless we get somehow that uh, Kurt says, well, it, it, it's three on three if uh, if we remove you, and Jason Jordan has nothing to do at TLC. <laughs> no. That's not going to happen. It could, That though. doesn't go into the story, though. It could, though. It's not going to happen. It could. Or they're just going to add Jason Jordan on the Shields team as a four on four. That... that might happen oh Um, man all right so uh oh the highlight of the night yeah i don't know why they started it the way they did what with finn coming out yeah that was not necessary no they honestly could have just had bray's thing Mm -hmm. by himself and it would have been fine but yeah bray comes out says this is comes out yes finn comes out (laughs) says this is balor club blah 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 Um, I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot Finn's there. Yeah. And he came out. Well, they, they, they were teasing the Bray thing all night. Right. Um, so he he says that he's not afraid of uh, Bray, and he can bring on whatever he wants. Mm-hmm. Um, so Bray comes onto the screen in his rocking chair, mm-hmm. and then he starts talking, and then he transforms into this, like, you know, it's got, like, swamp monster. On over his face. And yeah. Just, so, and apparently they, that's the embodiment of Sister Abigail. Yeah, and then they changed the voice. Yeah, so at least they went with the possession angle instead of having it be a person. At least or this Bray makes Wyatt sense. Drag. I'm hoping for it. Yeah, at least this makes sense. Um, and I, I don't know if that's the right word. But more so than if they had another person. I guess. Yeah. Okay, well, let's say... You decide that it's a person, mm-hmm. so he's gonna wrestle better because he has a person in his corner. <laughs> no, it's, does that make any sense? No, you're exactly. Right. Right. So, you're allowed to be right, don't worry. Every know, once in a while, it's true. That it happens more often than you'd like to admit. Sure. So, um, you keep thinking that, yeah. So, he, uh, I guess Sister Abigail will refer to as says, The season of the witch is upon you, talking to Finn. And, um, so this was a yeah. rip off of the Norman Bates character i guess i guess it was a movie or something like that that's what i've been reading i don't know yeah i was gonna say i don't know if the beats motel show came from oh maybe i was gonna say is this supposed to be something i recognize because i I don't know anything about it but apparently everything was like like they literally used phrases and stuff that was used in the movie i believe whatever yeah absolutely vince is not afraid to copyright fringe no he's also not afraid to sue people who try to do it as well yeah those poor, those poor fine gentlemen from the ball club can't use two sweets. I mean, this is like the same crap as the as Impact with the Hardys, mm-hmm. with the uh, the broken gimmick. Yeah, but where I'm, they're using it, but they're not using right. it. Yeah. So now, um, in the New Japan show, instead of doing the two sweet, they go like this, like the ET <laughs> finger, and then I think Cody posted it on Twitter, and he's like, now if ET sues us, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Or maybe it was Marty Skrull. It was one of them. But it, it was yeah. good stuff. It's pretty funny. Because uh, I remember during Kenny Omega's match, it was him, Cody, and Marty Skrull together. And uh, he went to Too Sweet. Don, or Don Callis went to Too Sweet. And he said, no, no, he can't do that anymore. <laughs> so he puts the finger out. And that's what they were doing to all the audience. Oh, it was so good. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, all right. So up uh, next, we had the most cringeworthy yeah, moment I'll, of the night, I'll, which I'll is take Im- it. Which is impressive. Yeah, following Bray. Yeah. But that that was your 10 o'clock hour. Yeah, it's true. Um, so this was the fatal five-way for the to winner face to face Asuka at TLC. Mm-hmm. So we had, what, Dana Brooke, Alicia Fox, Emma, Sasha, and Bailey. Yes. So Dana Brooke botched what three three moves in a row um at least two well if you count all of the very obvious pulled punches and kicks on the outside to sasha 
Uh, it it's probably even, a lot more than yeah, that. It, I, I just felt bad because she has not been on TV in so long. Well, there's then, a reason for it. But her matches on main event when she was in them weren't that bad. I, I was I was going to say that, and I was thinking this when she was coming out. I'm like, if it wasn't the fact that she was such a terrible wrestler, she would be such a good, viable mm-hmm. women's wrestler. Right. Just off of her look and her, like, I guess, not because yeah. you don't really have a gimmick. She's got mm-hmm. a, a presence. Right. She's like well, a, she's a strong, she's a bodybuilder. So, yeah, she's yeah. got a strong presence. Mm-hmm. So literally, if it wasn't her, her lack of wrestling In ability skills, yeah, uh, she would be uh, significantly better off. Which is funny because she's got a lot of fans too. A lot of people really do like her. She's got a very good entrance music. Mm-hmm. I like that song. Yeah, it's a shame that we don't get to hear it more often. Yeah. Um. um so Bailey eliminates her with the belly to belly. Yeah, well, she got in some offense, which was her botching moves. Yeah, against Bailey. Yeah. And uh, then... Well, first, Bailey pins her. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow, that's a really short match. And then... Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's and, right, right. And then they go, oh, yeah, I guess it's an elimination they say, No, match. they say Dana Brooke has been eliminated. And, and then uh, Michael the Cole goes... Like, oh, I guess it's an elimination So, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention it's an elimination <laughs> match. I guess they decided to do that on the fly. Oh, my God. Oh, so. man. Yeah, that was really the uh, the way this whole match went. Um, afterward, what was it, Alicia Fox? She axe-kicked Bailey. Oh, it was a, bad. And, a, and pinned her immediately. Yeah, kicked her, like, in the lower back area. Yeah. It was not pretty. And then um, and pretty much right after that, Sasha hit locks... Ugly uh, bank statement. Like, well, the way oh, you know, the she, way she got it. Yeah. yeah, she and flipped the, over and just out of position completely, and yeah. Banks put her in a bank statement. Mm-hmm. And then Emma rolled her up, right? Right well, after. Well, immediately after Alicia uh, taps out, that's mm-hmm. when Emma rolls up Sasha, and then she wins. Yep. So Emma will face Asuka at TLC. Yeah, I, I, I saw that coming from a mile. Well, they've been teasing Emma to be the first opponent for Asuka. Oh, were they? For, uh, since her, not teasing, but rumored I gotcha. that she'd be the first opponent for Asuka mm-hmm. since the debut. Yeah. Or since the debut was announced. Um. So... Like like you said, it was pretty pretty obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so up next, uh, Renee Young interviews Balor about Bray Wyatt. Mm-hmm. Uh, Balor says that he uh, he fears that Bray has unleashed something yeah, horrible. Yeah, he was definitely selling it. Oh yeah, he, yeah, fantastic! It was surprising how well yeah. he was acting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was like when Bray was doing the bridge at their match at uh, mm-hmm. uh oh. yeah. No mercy. Yeah. But uh, he says he knows what he has to do, and then he storms off. Mm -hmm. And then we got the announcement that next week, Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns will face off in a steel cage match. Yeah. It's, you know. Yeah. We'll we'll definitely get some sort of big spot, I would assume. And I would imagine that the bar and the rest of the shield, at least, will have some kind of involvement. Mm -hmm. And we'll have a non-cruiserweight main event. I would assume. (laughs) Yeah. So (laughs) who knows? So, uh, but yeah. Yeah. And then what do we get? An interview with Kalisto. Mm -hmm. Um, and he was basically saying that Mysterio and Guerrero were his inspirations, right? Was it Guerrero's birthday? Right. Uh, Supposedly. Yeah. I, I, I I don't know if it was a coincidence. Yeah. And they, or they just said Mm -hmm. that it was. Yeah. He basically said he wanted to make them proud when he wins the title. Which is funny because he's talking about someone who's alive and someone who's not alive, mm-hmm. talking as if they're both in the same situation. Yeah. So. And Mysterio's in another uh, wrestling company. Well, I guess technically he might as well be dead at that point. Yeah. In the eyes of uh, Vince McMahon. Yeah, so I guess that kind of makes more sense. Which is funny, because there was rumors of them re-signing Mysterio to boost the 205. Yeah, but, but I think they went in another direction, the or they, they weren't know. interested in I, Mysterio. Yeah. Or Mysterio wasn't interested. I, yeah, that's probably what it was. Yeah. So there's only so much you can do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that brings us to the main event, and mm-hmm. uh, that's when you texted me, and each of the cruiserweights were getting their own entrance, and mm-hmm. then it cuts the commercial break. Yep. <laughs> and they're like, oh, that's how we're going to eat up time, because yep. it was like 10.30 at this point or something, like maybe 10.40. 10 yeah, I was going to say it was a little after 10.30. Um, yeah. But yeah, they all get individual entrances, mm-hmm. and they're all getting their own, like, like I guess... I don't know, like spotlight mm-hmm. in terms of like Michael Cole was talking about them or Corey Graves was. Yeah. And um, and then they cut the commercial. Then the rest of them come out. Yep. I didn't notice this last night, but I was thinking about it. I don't think Neville is there. 
Yeah, you might be right. Yeah. And the way they set it up was that the heels were on the... They're on two different sides, and yeah. then the faces were on the opposite Yeah, they sides. were like... Yeah. It was very... Because uh, it makes sense, mm-hmm. because they usually like, group together, but it's still kind of funny. Yeah. And also, there was only like 10 of them out there. Yeah. So... <laughs> There's not many. Yeah, it wasn't much of a, a lumberjack no. match. But it was, it was good for what it was. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I feel bad if they're... Kalisto being this his showcase match in the main event, and he had to slow down like his normal speeds like a six, and mm-hmm. he had to slow it all the way down to one. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of lumberjack shenanigans mm-hmm. where they would get thrown out. Well, yeah, and, and so we'd in. get thrown out, and then the heels would kind of like just leave him alone, and, and then he'd go back then, in on his own. Then the faces were, I think, at one point Mustafa Ali <laughs> threw him back in, and that led to the brawl. Mm-hmm. And everybody was brawling outside, and Kalisto and Enzo were fighting on the turnbuckle, mm-hmm. and then Kalisto suplexes Enzo into the into lumberjacks. The, into the group. It was a cool spot. Yeah. Um, and then... Right, and then that brought Enzo hit the... Oh, yeah. Dunzo. Yeah, and then um, Ali pulls him outside, because yeah. this is a no disqualification match, right. I guess. Mm-hmm. I guess the lumberjack matches are inherently that. I don't know. Yeah. They don't happen very often. No, so. they shouldn't be. Because I, I know that you you can throw them in the ring. I don't know if yeah. you can actively interfere, but it doesn't matter. Member rules are made yeah, up. Yeah, that's true. Um, and everything changes all the time. Yeah, that's true. But sure. he gets pulled out of the ring. Um, Kalisto goes to the top rope to do something on the outside, but Enzo climbs in, knocks him down. Mm-hmm. But Kalisto is able to overcome him and the heats the Salido del Sol. Del Sol. Off the top rope, which actually looked really it was cool. Really nice, yeah. Because um, he stood on the uh, LED, the the mm-hmm. the turnbuckle. Yep. Uh, it got a lot of post. a lot of height, yeah. a lot of airtime, and it looked great. Yeah. And uh, he gets the pin. Mm-hmm. And now Kalisto is the new cruiserweight champion. Yeah. Which that honestly, whole, I didn't uh, see coming. No, I I definitely expected Enzo to retain. Well, to like when all the cruiserweights got together, I figured he was going to go in and hit a low blow or something. Yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah, that would have mm-hmm. that made perfect sense yep. to me, and I was like, whoa. So, um, but this builds Enzo into a storyline with a cruiserweight. Yes, and you were able to play off the whole him being untouchable with the cruiserweight. They did a good job with it. Yeah. I, I well, they kind of booked themselves into a corner by giving him <laughs> a clause that said he couldn't be touched or yes. they wouldn't be able to, mm. and then having them all touch him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so honestly, I fo- I felt that Kalisto wasn't the person to do it, but no. at the same time, I guess I can live with it. Well, I mean, it wasn't a clean, you know, he's yeah. probably going to come out tonight on 205 and say that he was robbed and everything like that, which yeah. is fine, which I'm guessing he'll get a rematch. At yeah. Maybe a Survivor TLC. Series. Oh, it's TLC is their pay per view. I forgot. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hopefully not a TLC match, but maybe because that would even. That'd be, be cool, odds. but I don't think Enzo is the correct person to put in it. Yeah. All right. So while we're on here, what other matches are we going to have when you have your top six people in a match together? Um, Seven. I would imagine Jason Jordan's going to have a match with one of the club. I think. On the pre-show? Or are we just going to get Matt Hardy and Jason Jordan again? Versus That's possible. Alice and Anderson. Put them in like a tables match. Yeah. But I mean, this would be the perfect time to spot to showcase your cruiserweights in like a TLC or something. Remember how good that well, they could have a ladder and Tozawa match. match was? Because usually TLC has right, the one we? TLC match mm-hmm. and then a bunch of gimmick matches. Yeah. So it could be, let's say, Matt Hardy and... Um, Jason Jordan against the club in a tables match. Right. A ladder match for the Cruiserweight Championship. Mm. Um, and then maybe some other kind of gimmick. Yeah, maybe a number one contendership match or something like that. There's not going to be any number one contender uh, match. Because Finn and Bray are fighting. I meant for the Cruiserweight Championship. Oh, no, that's not going to happen. They're going to have two women's matches. They're not going to have two oh, yeah, Cruiserweight right. matches, yeah, too. Okay, that's true. Um, there's a chance technically that Alexa and Mickey could have a stipulation. Mm-hmm. That's, That's more likely Alexa than Alexa won her first title. Yeah. It's more likely than um, Oscar and Emma. Yeah, no, no, that'll be just a regular match. Yeah, so which I would assume that's going to be a very quick match. I guess I don't know. It depends on what they feel, how they feel about Emma. Yeah, because Emma's good. Oh yeah, she's just not showcased properly. Also, she's booked weird. Oh, not booked weird. She like her stories are weird. They just don't know what to do with her. Yeah, which is a shame. what it comes down to. Um, yeah. But yeah, going back to the, the Kalisto thing, honestly, if it was up to me, or not up to me, but my, in my opinion, the perfect time to have put the title on him was last year at Survivor Series when he fought Kendrick. 
for oh, that's moving right. the sh- the cruiserweight title to SmackDown. Or yeah, that would have yeah. been the best thing to do. Yeah, because you know it gives him rub. Oh yeah, I forgot about puts that. Puts him in the in the division, and it makes it more interesting. And but I don't know. I have no particular problem with Enzo's involvement in the cruiserweight division. Yeah. So well, like I said, the, I believe the ratings have been up and things like that, and you can't argue with the results. It's true. So yeah, but yeah. That was our Raw review. It's true. If you like what you see here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.